Hi, welcome back. In this video, let's understand decoder. As the name implies, decoder takes an input code word and changes it into a set of signals. It translates coded information from one format into another. Decoder can be any of the type BCD decoder, binary decoder, octal decoder and so on. A binary decoder transforms n-bit binary input signal to a maximum of 2 par n outputs. One of these outputs will be active high based on the combination of input present. Let's see an example of 2 is to 4 binary decoder. So this is a 2 is to 4 binary decoder which takes two inputs A0 and A1 and there are four outputs D0 to D3. As you can see, when the inputs are 0 and 0, the data D0 is high and the rest are 0. When it is 0 and 1, D1 is high and the rest are 0. When the input A1 and A0 are 1 and 0, then D2 is high and the rest are 0. When it is 1, 1, D3 is high and the rest are 0. So this is the operation of a decoder. For a given coded input, the binary decoder output represents all the possible min terms. As you can see here, these four outputs D0 to D3 can be written as follows. D0 is high only when A1 and A0 both are 0. So D0 is equal to A1 bar and A0 bar. Similarly, D1 is A1 bar A0, D2 is A1 A0 bar and D3 is A1 A0. As you can see, all these are min term representations for a function of two inputs A1 and A0. Let's see a real world application of decoder. Suppose you want to write a code for a token display system that you see in banks. These display systems have 7 segment LEDs. 7 segment LED displays may either be of common cathode type or a common anode type. In the common cathode type, all the LEDs share a common negative terminal which is connected to ground. To glow any LED, we need to give a logic high or VDD to the other terminal. For a 7 segment display with 7 LEDs and a dot point, there are 8 terminals from A to G and a DP which is dot point terminal. In common anode, all the LEDs share a common positive terminal which is connected to VCC. To glow any particular LED, we need to give a logic glow at the other terminal. Suppose you want to glow only A, we need to give 0 at A. So for a token display system, your input will be digits 0 to 9. So they will require 4 bits. Since the range of your input is from 0 to 9, we can consider these as BCD inputs. From these inputs, you need to generate 7 segment codes that will drive these terminals of your 7 segment display. You can do that by having a BCD to 7 segment display decoder. So this decoder decodes your 4 input bits. Suppose to glow a 0 on your 7 segment display, your input will be 0000, 0, 0, 0 since your digit is 0. And uh, since 0 requires all the LEDs except this middle one that is G LED to be on for a common cathode 7 segment display, you will need to give 1 to all terminals other than G. Similarly, to represent digit 1, you will only require to on B and C segment. So only for B and C you have 1 and for the others you have 0. You can proceed like this so on for all the digits from 0 to 9. This now is your decoder truth table for a common cathode 7 segment display. Another example, you can see the instruction decoder of microprocessors. You must all be aware of 8085 microprocessor which has opcodes as follows for its instructions. Opcodes are 8 bit codes and depending on each of the instruction, the execution unit has to perform different operations. Say for move, it has to load your register 1 to the bus and start clocking the register 2. For add, it has to load R the register to the bus and set the ALU to add instead of subtract and it has to clock the accumulator. These are some of the operations that it needs to do based on the instruction. So from the instruction opcode, the processor needs to decide 
the control signals to be given to the execution unit. This would be done by the instruction decoder. This 8-bit opcode is converted to control signals by using the instruction decoder. From the above two examples, you must have understood why we would need a decoder. Now, let us see how to write the Verilog code for decoder. We'll start with data flow model. As always, to write a Verilog code in data flow model, you will need to know the gate level representation of your circuit. So the gate level representation of a 2 to 4 binary decoder is as follows. We know that we need to satisfy this truth table. That is when A1 and A0 is 0, 0, only T0 should be 1. When the input is 1, D1 should be 1 and so on. So this would be your gate level representation. Now let's write the Verilog code looking at this representation. I have opened the EDA playground. We need to write the module for decoder 2 to 4 data flow which has inputs A0 and A1 and 4 outputs D0 to D3. Now we will need to generate A0 bar and A1 bar. Let's do that by taking two other wires. Once we have got A0 bar and A1 bar from A0 and A1, we can proceed to write this structure. For the first AND gate, we get the D0 output and the inputs are A0 bar and A1 bar. For the second, we get D1 as output and the input will be A0, A1 bar and so on for all the four AND gates. Since we are using data flow modeling, we have used assignment statements to represent our AND gates. Now we have all the four two input AND gates ready and we have got the four outputs D0 to D3. So this is our Verilog code for 2 to 4 decoder using data flow modeling. Let's write the test bench. So this is the test bench. As usual, we have given input stimulus to each of these inputs A0 and A1 and we are observing the data D0 to D3. So after every 10 timestamps, we have given A0, A1 from 00, 01, 10 and 11 and we are printing the output D0 to D3. As you can see, when A0 and A1 both are 0, only D0 is set to 1 and the others are 0. At timestamp 10, when A0 is 1 and A1 is 0, only D1 is set to 1, others are set to 0. So we have successfully written the 2 to 4 decoder data flow model Verilog code. Let's see the synthesized output. This is the synthesis schematic of a 2 to 4 binary decoder by using data flow modeling. As you can see, the synthesized circuit is same as the one we intended. Now let's write the behavioral code. I have opened the EDA playground. We need to write our Verilog code for 2 to 4 decoder using behavioral modeling. Like always, let's use vectors to represent our input and output because they will be easier while we are using the behavioral modeling. So we have input for a 2 to 4 decoder the input is 2 bit wide so we have a 2 bit vector a and the outputs which are 4 is represented by vector from 0 to 3 d. Now since we are writing a behavioral modeling we will use always statements and then write the algorithm for our decoder. Algorithmically the 2 to 4 decoder can be represented using k statements. So when the input is 0, 0, we assign 1 only to D0 and 0 to all the other bits. When it is 1, only D1 is set to 1 while the others are set to 0 and so on. Now this is the behavioral code which is ready. Let's get the test bench and verify. We were successfully able to write the decoder behavioral code. Now let's see the synthesis output. When the behavioral code was synthesized, this was the output I got on Vivado. You can see that it is representing using a multiplexer, but we wanted a decoder. But notice that based on the multiplexer select line, that is A, it is set to 0001, 0010, 0100, 1000 and so on. So although this is a multiplexer, it functions as a decoder. The synthesis tool has just used RTL Mux to represent your decoder. 
that's it for today's video. Hope you understood Decoder. In the next video, we'll see frequently asked interview questions on Decoder and Demultiplexer. Thank you.